Hello and welcome to Creating Seamless Textures. It won't be long before you start wanting to create your own textures. The trouble is however that when you bring them into Second Life they aren't seamless. Now whilst making them seamless can seem a rather daunting task, I'm going to show you quickly and easily how to make them seamless in just a matter of minutes. Now one way you can use to make them seamless is say the clone stamp, which is this guy here, or you could come down and you can use a little bit of blur and smudge. And whilst you can achieve good results, there is a much, much simpler way to do this. So firstly, let's take a look at how we know whether a texture is seamless or not. This rustic texture that I have here looks very nice. However, if I was to go into filter and down to other and offset, you'll notice now that it's actually got these lines across it here. So if I was to take it into Second Life and apply it to a prim and then set the settings to be more than one by one, i.e. I use repeats of say two by two, you'll see that it would have a line like this. I'm just going to cancel that for a minute. Now if I was to go through and I started to smudge it etc, we could tidy it up. But a much simpler way is to go through and create a new texture and then we're simply going to copy and paste and rotate the texture around so it then becomes seamless. For sake of ease we're going to use a texture that's 400 by 400 pixels. Remember that Second like Life likes to use either 512 by 512 or 256 by 256 pixels but I'm going to make it easier by just simply using a square box because it'll be much easier for you to use and I hate personally doing maths. So clicking on file and down to new and choosing 400 by 400 and we can have a background there of white that's fine and you can see here we've got our texture or our canvas sitting here. I then want to pop back over to my other one and I want to go into the image and I'm going to change my image size and make it 200 by 200. And the reason being is obviously 2 times 200 would fit into the 400. And the next step that we want to do is come through and click on view and come down here to show and turn on our grid lines. Now the reason I want to have my grid lines on, and you can see I've got it on this little image here, but I want it on the one at the back as well, is that it just makes it simpler when I go down and I start to paste my texture over. And you can see here we've got one, two, three, four, etc. So our grid lines are on there. We now want to pop back to the other texture and we're going to copy and paste that over into this here. So I'm over here at my rustic and what I want to do is go select and all and then edit and copy and then popping over here to my other canvas. Notice that once I click on it the background area here has become highlighted so that means it's my current layer I'm working on and I want to then come into edit and down here to paste and it will paste it up into a new layer. So I'm going to come over here and click on my tool called the move tool and I'm just going to click and drag it up in here to the top corner. So that's how easy it is to bring in that texture. Now we need to go through and make a copy. There's many ways to do it. I like to click on this particular layer. In fact I'm going to click in there and call it uh, top layer left. And then I'm going to click. I'm going to come down here to the little icon that's called make new layer and click there and you'll see now it's duplicated it. And I'm going to call that top layer right. So what I want to do is I can bring it and click it and drag it over here but that's not actually going to make my texture correct. So what I need to do is come up to edit and I want to come down to transform and I want to flip it. So I'm going to flip it horizontally. And then if I click and drag it over here so you can see now I've got a mirror copy of that image and I've flipped it over to here so it's flipped on the horizontal nice and simple. Now what we want to do is come back down here to our top layer left and we're just going to click it down here and make another layer and I'm going to click on here and drag it up and I'm going to call that top, in fact it's going to be bottom layer left because this is the one I want to now bring down the bottom and the same story I can click in here and I can drag it down but you'll notice that when I've dragged it down it's still not sitting um, in a tileable way so we click on edit down to transform and last time we did horizontal this time we want to do vertical and you can see now that it's achieved the result that it's flipped it over vertically. Now I could copy that one or I could copy that one it's entirely up to you 
Just for sake of ease, I'm going to click and drag this one down. I'm just going to move it up here and say uh, bottom layer right. And all I'm simply doing here is clicking in that layer and just renaming it. So edit, down to transform, over to vertical, and now when I click and drag it down, you can see there that I have gone through and my whole texture is now seamless. Now if I wanted to be certain of that, what I'm going to do is come up here to layer and I'm going to go down to um, flatten image. Now I know you didn't see that on your screen but it's at the bottom of layer. And if I was to then come back into filter and go to other and offset, you can see now, and we'll just change it to 200 by 200. You can see there that it doesn't show anywhere, and I'll just go to view and show and turn off my grid lines. You can see there there is actually no um, markings like we had before. And I'm just going to go back to my other texture and just show you again. So here was my original texture we started with, and if we could pop up here to filter, other, offset, and we'll make it 125 by 125 you can see the lines on it. Okay, so if we took that into Second Life it would look terrible. You can see here that because we've flipped it and rotated it around, doesn't matter how many times you reuse that in Second Life, it would be completely seamless. Now a couple of things, it's got that darker shade in there because that was how this little texture had that darker patch in there and you know when you worked on it you could remove that and you could start to do a few bits and pieces with it to change it. However there is a fast and simple way of creating a seamless texture. I hope you enjoyed that and I look forward to seeing you in Second Life.